folks, Marcus here from the Ashton Fly Shop. We're back at the Vice um, from what seems like a good hiatus. It's been a while since we've tied a fly, but um, we've got fall weather and our water's starting to cool off, so I wanted to do another variation of a mini intruder, um, which is most of the stuff I try to fish um, once we get cooling water um, is a fly kind of like this. I think I'll probably do a different wing on this fly that we're tying today, but um, as I go through the process, I'll talk about the different wings that you could use. So we'll hop right into it here. Um, for the hook, I've got an owner size four SSW, and I'm just gonna take, um, I just get 30 pound fire line and I'll take maybe four inches off of there. I'm gonna grab the ends of this fire line and align them together and just make sure that they go up through the eye of the hook and around the bend, just like that, so that that hook hangs nice and straight behind the fly. And then I use um, just hollow tubing. Um, I get this stuff from the craft store but there's a fair amount of stuff out there like it. Um, Aquafly's ultra tubing is a good one. So you just slide it on the fire line and then I make sure that it seats over the eye of the hook. And that way when your hook's hanging behind the fly, it'll just be nice and strong. For the shank, I'm gonna use the Aquafly's 27 millimeter return eye shank, which is my preferred um, mini intruder shank if I'm doing anything with eyes. So I've got it in my vise here. And I'll start with my thread right up near the eye of the fly. This is 50D Vivas gel spun thread and I'll just work gradually back to the, to the jaws here. And then I like to tie in so that that connection point is just right at the back there. And it kind of jets straight up so I go to the hardware store and buy a little magnet to lock that hook down so I'm not hooking myself through the process. And then you can see on top I just have these two strands of fire line and I try and keep them in the same position and just wrap gradually up the shank. I'm going to flip it on my side so I can see what I'm doing here. And then I'll put those through two strands through the eye and I'll come back and get a rough measure of how far back behind that stuff needs to go. And I'll bend it back and now you guys are looking at the bottom of the shank and I'll capture that. Wrap all the way way up towards the eye and then start to gradually come back. This is one of the areas where a rotary vise really comes in handy because you can see everything that you're doing. And just try and keep these wraps. Ooh, cut my thread. Sharp scissors. We'll just start above it. Grab both of these thread tag ends and snip them. And you just want nice, even thread wraps, providing as even a body as you can, and keeping those thread wraps touching as you work, or close to touching as you work up and down the shank will help keep that, that 
fire line really trapped in there. For the eye on this fly, I've got the Aquaflies Intruder Eyes. This is the 1 8 inch in black, which I think is just the coolest color. But if you were tying, they, they sell a range of colors. So for attaching these eyes, I'll usually let my thread hang down right next to the eye. I'll put the eye very level and do four or five wraps just straight over that bar right there. And then I'll kind of straighten them so they're level. And then do four or five on that side. And you want to make sure that whatever number you choose there, you kind of stay more or less even to it on both sides so that the eyes don't kick one way or the other and that'll help help the fly swim really nice and after I've got them kind of locked down each couple wraps when I come around I'll give it a good pull and you can kind of fiddle with them to make sure that those things are in there and those guys are pretty well locked down. Oftentimes I will do a little bit of Zappa Gap on them too. All right, now I'm back at the base of the fly and I'm gonna make a little dubbing loop that goes right next to this junction point at the back end of the fly. I've just got a little bit of dubbing wax that I'm going to put in this loop. For the dubbing on the back end, I honestly don't know what this dubbing is. Um, it's fluorescent orange. I don't know what material it is. It's in an unmarked package from like 30 years ago. So I'm using it. I'm just going to kind of wad it up a little bit. Any fluorescent orange dubbing will work in its place. This stuff seems to have some, like it might be like an Angora synthetic composite type dubbing. And then I've got some orange Arctic Fox. You could use Fin Raccoon in its place. You could use orange craft fur. I'm just going to pull away some of these longer guard hairs and then switch hands. and give myself just a little clump of Arctic Fox and put it in this dubbing loop right behind the dubbing. And I'm going to give it a couple good spins. And I brush mine out lightly just with some Velcro. Nice thing about this dubbing is it's got some, whatever it is, it has some nice longer fibers. And then I'll just pick that stuff out more with this fine tooth comb. And start to come around and really come right at the base of that junction and any any um, longer fiber dubbing you kind of want to as you wrap it um, before you come around on these wraps you want to make sure that it's all laying back and the same thing with the arctic fox you almost want to fold it so it's in kind of like a little hackle
and I'll pick it out again. Then I've got some hot orange ostrich, kind of some finer ostrich. I've got, oh, I don't know, 15 strips of it. I'll line it up in my loop. Give it a little spin. And I just want to be sensitive as I'm spinning that I'm not catching too much of this Arctic Fox as I spin. You could catch a little bit, but you don't want to catch a ton. So I'll just come in with my scissors and keep freeing that dubbing loop when it wants to catch the Arctic Fox. So I've got some spun ostrich and just a little bit of water in a cup on the side of the table and I'll wet this stuff down and get it almost to where it's like a hackle on a cord. And I found that really helps obviously laying it down. Um, getting it to go the direction you want, but it also really helps with these wraps as you're wrapping with the dubbing loop to make sure that they're just going as tightly in that space as you can get them so that you're not taking up, especially when you're working on such a small platform. I'm gonna cut these butts out of here. But when you're working on a small platform, you really wanna be as efficient with this space as you can. You could throw some flash in there if you like flash. I tend not to use a whole bunch of flash. But if you like to, now would be a good time to put some in there. And then I've got kind of an orangish natural saddle that I'm going to throw on top of this station to kind of trap everything down, make it look nice and neat. But I don't really want to use this bigger, longer stuff. On a little intruder like this, you want to keep these lengths kind of proportional to the size fly you're tying. So I'll tie it in right there and just go slowly making sure that it's tied in right where that ostrich leaves off and I'll clip that tip of the hackle. Grab my hackle pliers just start to wrap and make sure that it's all starting to lay down the way we want it. Might pick those fibers out a little bit as I wrap. And this fly is super similar to the to the Aquafly's Mini Intruder. It's not identical. Theirs has um, flash in it, has crystal flash, and it's got um, red and black ostrich at the same time, or uh, red and orange ostrich at the same time. So this is a little different. Kind of tied, tied a little bit sparser and longer, which I like. So I've got this rear station here for the body, um, I recently brought in Vivas Floss into the shop, um, and I really like this stuff. I used it 
on all my traditionals, but it's also a really nice body material on intruders. It's just really flat and it's got a nice sheen to it. So I'll tie it in the length of what will be the body. And then for the rib, I'm going to use kind of, this is like doing an intruder, but with the materials that you'd use on more of a classic steelhead fly. This is small silver French tinsel, also from Beavis, which I kind of think just makes the best tinsels and flosses and threads out there, really. At least it's my favorite to use. So I'll trap the, the French tinsel in the back. Actually, make sure this floss is free, then I'll trap the French, French tinsel. I'll just take this floss and get nice, consistent wraps. Not a huge difference over my thread, but you can tell it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. And the body, you know, on a 27 millimeter shank, you're not going to wind up with very big of a body. And then I'll come with this French tinsel. It's kind of cool, you know, that that's what the upper portion of a body on like a green butt skunk would look like. It's kind of cool in the middle of an intruder. So right on top of that, I'm going to start another dubbing loop. Give it a couple twists. Again, I've got some dubbing wax. You can really use any wax you want. I do find this, um, especially with ostrich, this gel spun thread. Having wax is going to help. So on the front station, I've just got Peacock Black Ice Dub, just simple. You could use any dark color up here. Get it in the loop there. And then I'm going to use black Arctic Fox Tail or substitute, whatever. Whatever you like to use and I'll pull away the guard hairs. And trim this stuff down. And then I'll slide it right on the back end of that dubbing. Give it a couple spins here. And again, I'll start to brush it out with Velcro and then come back through with this spiny, spiny guy. Whoop. And I'll start right on the back end of the body. Just build that dubbing ball. So you do those wraps right over each other and just make sure these wraps are nice and tight because you don't have, like I was saying, 27 mil shank. If you're going to do two stations on the thing, you're not going to have a ton of real estate. That's a good front station with a lot of spiny. I'll just tie off this dubbing loop, making sure it comes right to the face of that prop. Then I'm going to do another little dubbing loop. Make sure it's right near the base there. Again, I'll do a little bit of dubbing wax in there. Feels good to tie. I kind of took, been just fishing a lot lately and
taking a break from tying. It's nice to be back on the vise. All right. Now, for the front fiber, I've got a really long, dangly ostrich. Wonder what part of the feather I'll take from up here. Might come right to the top of the feather. These seem to be pretty consistent length. It's worth saying both of these feathers that I have, the lengths are not that consistent and you could, you know, lay them all out on the table. Um, get those lengths to be pretty consistent or like what I'm doing, I'm kind of just throwing it in there and I don't mind those varied lengths. Um, I kind of like having that couple different lengths coming through the fly. So I'll give it some spins. Whoa, that got out of hand. Make sure it's more or less tight. Then I'm gonna bend all these back. Those might be a little long, it's worth saying. For the proportion of the fly. Sometimes I tie intruders and I'll have a fly that might set up kind of like this one where it's got some longer ostrich than what I like to see. Um, just kind of the portions just look a little different than what I like to see. Um, and then I'll take it out to the river and it'll just look so awesome. I'm gonna clip some of these stems. I've had that happen a number of times where like the fly that you see in the bin or in your box doesn't quite look, just might not have the proportions that you had in your mind as being the right ones. And then you take it out to the river and it's like, whoa, that thing swims like crazy. And I found, I think the rule of thumb behind that is I have tended to do my rear station shorter than my front station on my intruders, kind of like this one. Um, but I've had intruders where the rear station is really long and just in the water, those things, when you have those long fibers, sometimes it can just look really, really cool. So for a kind of finishing hackle on this fly, this is just black saddle hackle. I'll peel away the fluff at the back and find a decent little section, not too long, to throw a little collar on this guy. it nice and short, pull on that thread, grab the stem, kind of straighten everything out, make sure it's laying down in the proper direction. And just come right to the base, right behind those eyes. And that's, that's something that, that took me quite a, a lot of time. Um, I feel like when you get into intruders and it's, I'm really, <laughs> have become really particular about what the head looks like and not having the materials end too far before the head and leaving this big gap in there or, or just totally crushing and making this really big head. and. As far as proportions, not that it's the end all be all, that's exactly how I want them to look. The, the base of the collar comes right to the end of the eyes. And I, I just feel like that way you're really maximizing um, the platform and using the space well. 
Now because this doesn't take a lot of thread wraps to do, and we can do it, and it's cool, we're going to throw a little wing on this fly, and I'm going to use the same, same material that I did for the collar, just a black, thinner black saddle hackles. And I'm going to get them more or less aligned, get those tips to come to a similar point. You have a bunch of flexibility in how long you want these to be. I kind of think um, coming back around somewhere to the bend of the hook, the point of the hook, that's a good distance. So I'll clear some space on these stems, I'll chop these guys off. Just find the way that they want to lay. Um, and it helps if you have, you don't need it, um, but it helps to have a full patch of whatever you're using and you can pull from opposite sides and then you see they just um, have that nice, they lay down together. You can also use, I think some, for a fly like this, black and orange, you could do a red one. Um, that would be super cool with the half grizzly saddles that we have or um, orange would look really, really nice. But today I'm gonna do black. And though I want to put this thing all the way on there, I think that would just be so cool to have a long wing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a little, this will be, I, I would say more conventionally proportioned. A lot of people will do the split, split wing style. Um, and I think that's awesome too. I just right now in my tying, I'm really liking the tented stuff. So I'm going to do a little tent on top of this fly. Just want to make sure these are, these are laying the way I want them. Both of these stems through the eye, feeding it down through. And pretty much everything right now is just being nitpicky because water tension is going to pull those very straight together. But I do like when the fly is just sitting there to have them be pretty straight. So I'll do, you know, one wrap, maybe two wraps on those stems and then come up and keep doing that figure eight that I like to do to secure the eyes and that'll just make sure that those stems are pretty locked in there. Do one little whip finish, do another one. I didn't get that wing exactly aligned with my OCD, but it's pretty close. I just got a little loon hard head, or this is UV fly finish. Just kind of dab it. find with smaller flies, I really need to get in there with my bodkin, but with just getting it around an eye like that, the applicator bottle is, is a good, and then I'll come in and light it up. Just 
make sure you get all sides of it. I'll pop that guy out of there. So you see when you're tying, you leave a little bit of that shank out of there and you fold this tubing back over it and you can just slide that tubing back into there and then it's just a really tight connection. And the nice thing about the tubing, if the hook ever starts to ride down or whatever, you can just grab it and um, twist it to get it the way you want because that tubing, this tubing in particular, rides pretty secure on that diameter shank. And like I said, this has um, some kind of longer, wispier tendrils than what you might see from a, from a fly in the box. But man, you put that in the water, you'll see when we swim it, that, that thing is gonna be a swimmy little fly. Black and orange, super sweet color combo. Any of these rivers where you have kings coming up through the river, laying a bunch of eggs this time of year, black and orange is a nice combo. Um, fish as well through the month of October and November. Good Halloween colors. Thank you very much for tuning in.